Thank you so much for having me today. My name is Emma Haruka Iwao, and I'm a developer advocate for Google Cloud. My Twitter, uh, GitHub, and everything is at YU, um, And unfortunately, they suddenly study some road construction right next to my apartment, so I, I hope it's not too noisy for you. Now, uh, let's talk about friction logging. What do we do? What does DevRel do uh, as our job? Uh, well, first of all, we talk to external developers. We do events. We talk about new technologies, exciting new features. And, and then we do online content, such as podcasts, blog posts, YouTube videos, and these kind of online activities are getting more important these days. But we are developers ourselves as well. And DevRel is often part of the engineering orgs. So we write code. We, for example, develop sample demos and tutorials. And we work with the product teams to help them navigate through um, priorities and kind of external user expectations. So it's all about two-way communication, right? On, on left side, we, we do the outreach activities. We have technologies and features coming out of the product teams. And DevRel, on behalf of the product teams, spread the news and have external developers learn about new technologies and the features. On the other way, it's, it's about internal advocacy. We learn from external developers as we help them learn new technologies. And we bring the feedback to internal development teams. And we represent external developers there. And why do we do that? We, we serve as an internal outsider because product teams know too much about their products and technologies. So when they even when they test, we, they, they could instinctively avoid bumps and pitfalls. And products are often too big. It's harder to keep consistency across the board. Uh, if you have thousands of developers on a team, you, each of the teams would focus on a specific component or a specific feature. On the other hand, if even when you're developing a simple application, you use different products. Like, for example, when you're developing a simple diary, you'd use a database, you'd use uh, a web server or a virtual machine, you'd use, um, for example, a content CDN, content distribution network, and etc. So it's all about end-to-end -end, uh, combination of different products. And DevRel also represents external communities as well, right? We often work with programming language communities, such as Ruby, Go, Python. And we also work on special interests. Some of, it, some of us are specialized on DevOps, or machine learning, big data, et cetera. So we are more suited than product teams to uh, navigate through external um, use cases and challenges as well. Now we have the friction log as a tool to capture end-to-end -end user experience. Um, Friction log is designed to have a broader picture and context. And they are based on real world scenarios. Uh, for example, when you do a Rails Guards, uh, Rails Guards is a program to teach underrepresented folks uh, about Rails programming and programming, over, programming overall. And when you try to do the tutorial uh, with one of the Google products, how do I do? How do I deploy my Rails Guards application to Google App Engine? Right. Let me adjust the mic volume a little bit. 
how do I deploy my Rails Gauze application to Google App Engine? And that's a great friction log idea because that's a well-defined scope of work and you know exactly how you do on other platforms. And, and then this is a very basic step that everyone would take when they're using Google App Engine with Rails. So this is what a friction log would look like. Um, this is the real friction log that TensorFlow would use uh, for their friction logging. Um, it includes the tester or a name, date, uh, and the use case, like what am I doing with TensorFlow? And which product, if you, if you have multiple products, uh, for example, if you are talking about a cloud platform, you'd want to include products, you, products that you used. And you might want to include uh, some other context, such as environment, which OS you used, which programming language you're using, uh, versions of libraries, etc. And more importantly, and interestingly, we use these color coding to capture the emotional process as we walk through uh, the process. If we find something really pleasing or pleasant surprise, we mark them in green. And if we find something a little bit frustrating, but still can't get through it, uh, we will mark them yellow. And if we find something really, really frustrating, and for example, you end up like web searching for the topic for two hours and couldn't find the answer, you'd mark them red because you'd give up. Uh, if you if that wasn't for your job, this is an example of friction log. For example, when you are installing a new library, a new new feature, uh, you you can just create a friction log based on that process. And this is useful because your environment might be different from a typical development environment entirely at your company. So you include all the steps necessary to, uh, to repro repro reproduce your step, your job, um, you clone the GitHub repository, you install required libraries, and, and then you encounter an error. But you, you could easily figure out what was wrong and move on. So you'd mark that in orange. And everything worked without specifying any complicated options. So let's mark it green. And but after running the program, you encounter a program crash. So let's mark that red. And add a comment as a suggestion to the product team. So a friction log can be as simple, but uh, it captures the whole, the whole journey with some of the emotional process and. Uh, it covers from the beginning to the end. This is another example. Uh, for example, and the friction logs are not necessarily about bugs. When um, when you try to run a Rails application in Kubernetes, there is a specific thing about Rails. Um, so you can learn everything else uh, from the official documents and tutorials. But when you try to run Rails DB migrate command, that's a, that's a specific command to prepare the database for Rails. You, you don't have that piece of information on the official doc for other languages or other use cases. And I had to Google Kubernetes Rails DB migrate. And yes, I, I found the answer. So that's, that's, a, that's an orange. And it's not a product bug. But the suggestion could be, hey, can we have a simple Rails specific tutorial? Because it's a fairly common framework and there's a specific uh, challenge related to the framework. But everything else worked fine, so let's mark them green. And as you see from here, friction logs are not about finding the exact cause. You, you capture the experience. So they are best written with 
a technical expertise of a particular topic because you know you need to know the context but you don't need to or you you probably want to have as little as possible uh, of insider knowledge you want to act as close to an external developer so new team members are the best examples of external developers internally at your company so when you have a new team member you might want them uh, to write a few friction logs as they onboard and learn about your products and they it's also good because they are immediately contributing to products as they learn and they leave concrete artifacts. So friction logs are artifacts that you could use for your performance evaluations, for example. And you can start going to conversation with the product teams based on that log. And of course you, you learn about product um, more through writing friction logs. How uh, friction logs are different from bugs? So I put kind of things more related to friction logs on the left side and things more related to bugs on the right hand side. These are not necessarily exclusive because you might find bugs while writing a friction log, but friction log is more focused on things that are frustrating, not necessarily bugs, but if you spend like 30 minutes Googling something, that's a friction. On the other hand, bugs are things that obviously are broken. And the friction logs are based on external user scenarios um, and bugs are based on specifications, like how it should work. And new members are excellent friction log writer while experienced devs do an excellent job finding and fixing bugs. And the friction logs are scenario oriented. They cover end-to-end -end developer journey uh, across multiple products, while bugs are more about one or a few products. And write, the friction writing process cannot be automated because it's an emotional process, while bugs, uh, bug finding can be automated and should be automated as much as possible. And after writing a friction log, you might want to file bugs as an action items. For example, after writing this friction log on the left side, I might want to file bugs such as let's update docs or let's fix the crash. And, and the reason is because the locale is set to X or this library could be optional, right? Or let's add a feature. I wanted to use another algorithm, but it wasn't supported. So let's support that feature. So there might be different outcomes and uh, improvement suggestions to the product. And focus on the experience. If you need to do a lot of the research before making something work, that's a friction. It's not necessarily you are not familiar with the product. You, you don't feel you don't need to feel in that way at all. Like we, we still know more than a typical external developer as an insider. If we don't make it work or we, if we can't figure out offhand, that's, that's a friction. And the outcome might be more than just bug fixes. We could write tutorials for a specific scenario or we could improve documents or we could develop a new helper library to do the job. When do we write, wanna write friction logs? Well, there are a lot of opportunities. Before launching a new feature, of course, we, we might wanna try the feature on a, based on a specific scenario. And when we have a new team member, uh, that's a great opportunity to help them learn new product, uh, products and inside, inside technologies, as well as we learn from them. And when you hear feedback at events on social, or on social media, like I just tried to do X uh, with your product, but it didn't work. And if you know the context and, and can re reproduce the 
process, that's a friction, that's an excellent opportunity for friction logging. So basically, whenever you struggle with something or when you see something that's that's kind of wrong uh, on your daily job, such as creating demos, writing tutorials, uh, giving talks, preparing talks, uh, when you struggle with something, that's that's the essential friction. So let's capture that as as a form of a log. And after writing log, you talk to product teams and share the log and, and file, file bugs and help them reproduce bugs, prioritize bugs, and help them fix bugs, right? And on the other hand, you could write a blog post or submit a talk proposal based on that experience because you, you found an issue and, and the answer, and you know that's relevant. So that's a great uh, talk proposal. And you can also answer a stack overflow question if there is any. And you, if you cannot find a stack overflow question, you can also find a uh, post a question to you. Uh, on stack overflow, it's officially encouraged to ask and answer your own question. So it's a great place to share some product knowledge or some tips. So that's it, summary. So DevRel means external outreach and internal advocacy. It's a two-way communication channel. And friction logs are an important tool to capture end-to-end -end user journey. And when do we write friction logs? When we have a new feature or new team member, new team or new question. Whenever when we have an opportunity, we can write a friction log. What do we want to include? All the little steps we want to, as maybe as precise, if you hit multiple pages throughout the process, you, wanna, you might want to include the links to these pages. And use the color coding scheme to capture your emotional process as well. And what do we do after writing a friction log? Well, let's talk to the product teams and help them fix the bugs. But we can also create more content based on the experience. We can propose talks, we can create YouTube videos, write blogs, uh, answer stack of for questions. There's so much to do than just fixing bugs. That's it from my talk. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.